Hello Planeswalkers, Andrew here. And Tyler. Today we're bringing you another episode of Taps for Two. Today we wanted to talk about some uh, plot threads that Ma uh, Wizards has left open that we want to see explored in the near future. And believe me, I have opinions. <laughs> Do you now? <laughs> yes, I have very important opinions because they've left this particular fragment of story so wide open and so spaced out that we may not see another piece of it for another 15 years. Oh yeah? Do you want to start with that? Oh, well, sure. So, I want to say 15 or so years ago, uh, I want to say Mirage Block gave us Brushwag. Oh god! <laughs> and about recently, to go on a tangent about Brushwag. And recently, oh my god, we saw Almighty Brushwag on Ikoria. Yeah, where is he going, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> Fifteen years from now, when we're back to back to back to back to back to Ravnica. Are we going to see him again as part of the Selesnia Conclave? <laughs> He's not a planeswalker. It's not You're even right. The same what we will see is him in the Gruul clans. Because how do you know? How do how do I know both of those things? How do you, how do you know, Andrew? I guess I don't <laughs> how do know. you know he isn't the same? <laughs> okay, he could be the same, but it's it's not a planeswalker. It would be a planeswalker card. But you just admitted, if he could be the same, then he would have had to have been a planeswalker, because I don't know where Mirage Block takes place, but it isn't Ikoria. I don't want to entertain this thought anymore. <laughs> okay, so in actuality, Soren and Nahiri. Okay. that That's what I actually kind of wanted to hit on. I'm just, as I told you right before we started recording, I, I woke up like... I've been awake for maybe 15 minutes, and I was like, okay, I want to sit down and talk about this vampire and this core, and as soon as I logged on to Discord to start talking with you, my my monkey brain went, but what if Brushwag? All right. What is going on with him? <laughs> What's he up to? <laughs> but yeah, no, so, what? Uh, joke, joke intro aside, there's actually some... Like, relevance to when I'm talking about, like, long stretches of time, because the the feud between these two goes back for a while. Like, a lot of people, I feel like, underestimate exactly just how old Nahiri is. A few thousand years, at, at least, probably. Oh, she's more than a few thousand. Like, Soren with with Nicol Bolas and Ugin effectively out of the multiverse right now. I think it's safe to say Soren is the oldest being in the multiverse, like in existence. Yeah, I would go so far as to say Nahiri is probably by a, a good margin, but farther ahead than anything else. Nahiri is probably number two. Because, like, their story started, you know, they were the original three that um, sealed away the Eldrazi, you know, this, this, that, and the other thing. They, they like, decided they were going to basically use Zendikar as the sacrificial lamb because of all of its wild mana. Nahiri mm -hmm. was like, well, I don't want to sacrifice my world, but it's for the, for the greater good in the multiverse, and I've got my friends helping me keep them in check. And so that's what they did. They ended up putting in that spell that required three... This is like just the Hyper Cliff Notes version. That required three Planeswalker Sparks and Ugin's Ghost Flame. And... Uh, I think the reason that... or And then Nahiri ended up just like living her life. Because they, like, they sealed him away. Everything was good. Uh, and they, they agreed that... They would show back up on Zendikar um, if the Eldrazi were about to break free again. And Nahiri was like, okay, cool. We, we, have, this we have a plan. And for a while, she just like lived her life. Mm -hmm. And then I, if I remember correctly, I, she kind of got bored of that because she's a pre-mending walker. 
so her powers alongside like Ugin's and Soren's like and even um like Liliana because Liliana is technically pre-mending like they rivaled mm-hmm. gods they were they were effectively immortal I, and i did that I went away if... uh, after the mending right right that was kind of the crux of Nicobolus's whole thing is the elder spell was supposed to give him enough sparks that he would regain his his uh, pre-mending power, like Sarah, of like Sarah's angels, and like we saw her in um, in Modern Horizons as Sarah the Benevolent, who was a planeswalker, uh, probably one of the more famous pre-mending walkers. Her alongside Urza, like Sarah created an entire plane, like without even like breaking a sweat, is how powerful she was. Yeah, and then there's everything Urza did, but that's that's for another time because. Oh boy, Urza made a mess of everything. <laughs> so anyway, so Nahiri ends up like putting herself in, uh, in um, what's the word? What do bears do? Hibernation. She ends up putting herself in like hibernation, and she and like centuries, and I think even millennia go by, and she kind of drifts into she, memory and myth. Um, same with the Eldrazi Titans. They became, like, merfolk gods. Uh, and I think vampire gods, but they're, like, different god sets that came from the same same thing. Like, I know there's Cozy, Amiria, and Ula, who are the merfolk gods. Yeah. But they're all, they're just twisted memories of the Titans. Um, and I believe a vampire shrine, like a shrine built by vampires to worship their gods who are actually just uh, the spaghetti monsters from Beyond the Stars in an overcoat. Um, <laughs> I believe their thing is they built the shrine like on one of the nexus points of the prison of the Eldrazi and weakened it. And that woke up Nahiri. And welcome to story time with Tyler. I didn't actually realize how much of this story was even giving the Cliff Notes version. And I'm probably <laughs> getting a big chunk of it wrong. But, uh, so Nahiri wakes up and she's like, okay, the prison is, the prison is starting to, to open up. This is fine. I'll call Ugin and Soren. We'll get it resealed. Everything, everything will be cool. So she puts out the call uh, and hears nothing because Ugin is dead at this point. <laughs> <laughs> This is, this is during was... Soren was dealing with his own things on Innistrad, and I believe the reason that he gave, because eventually um, Nahiri ends up sealing it by herself, and then rightfully is like, okay, where is everybody? And ends up going to Innistrad to confront Soren. Um, and I guess, I think it was Avacyn's Curse Moot, which um turned like it lessened the effects of a lot of the evil stuff happening on Innistrad like it gave people that were inflicted with the werewolf curse um they were given the option of did they want to fully embrace the curse and let it become them and they became the or and those who did became i think it's the wolf fear or the wolf fear and they became like permanent wolf people, but they had their mind and their heart. Mm-hmm. And this whole curse moot was like kept strong by Avacyn, but it was kind of like a blanket over the plane. And I believe when Nahiri confronts Soren, like, hey, why didn't you come? Like, he goes, well, one, I don't know what's up with Ugin. And two, like, Avacyn was probably blocking your signal, but I mean. It doesn't matter. You handled it. And here he's like, it super does matter. You promised me. And so they get in the fight. They get in a huge fight. And Soren ends up sealing Nahiri in the... Hell Vault. The Hell Vault. Which was his own twisted version of... Uh, of hedron. Nahiri's Hedrons. Because Nahiri made the Hedrons and... Ugin inscribed them, and Soren presumably was also there too. And <laughs> <laughs> so he ends up casting her in there, and then the events of Innistrad happen, and it gets broken, and it releases Avacyn and Grizzlebrand, but it also released Nahiri, 
and Nahiri's like angry, and so that's when we have end up get end up getting into the events of you know Battle for Zendikar and Oath of the Gate Watch, uh, and Shadows over Innistrad and Eldritch Moon, where Nahiri brings Emrakul to Innistrad, you know, to make Soren suffer as she did. And then we didn't see them again until War of the Spark, where it's imp- it's shown that uh, even though they both came to Ravnica because of the beacon, at least in the beginning, they still continued to fight each other. Like, I can't remember which card it is, but one of them mentions that, like, even, like, an interplanar war that threatened, like, all of creation wasn't enough for the two to put aside their feud. Uh, but they did end up working together, and then the first moment they got, they left. And so, that's the last we've heard of the two of them. Yeah. And um, um, that is, that, that's something I want to see re-picked up. Because we don't know where either of them ended up. They could have two separate plot lines, although they seem so um, connected to one another that you probably won't, we probably won't see one without seeing the other. Exactly, and it did just dawn on me now, the next major set we're getting is Zendikar Rising, and one of the things that I think was like really advertised with it is this is a post-Eldrazi Zendikar. Yeah, it's not like with uh, Throne of Eldraine where we kind of went back in time to see the origin of Will and Rowan, we are exactly. g- we are continuing the continuity now. Exactly, and so we could uh, be seeing, like, maybe Soren going to Zendikar. Like, maybe the big villain of this set, rather than being the Eldrazi, could either be a continued fight between Soren and Nahiri, which I think would be super cool. Like, imagine this, like... Nahiri's big thing is white and or Nahiri's colors are white and red and Soren's are white and black. Let's say give Nahiri green and Soren blue and cuz Zendikar's original thing was it was supposed to be the D&D plane. It was the plane of you and your party were going out adventuring and one of the big popular things with D&D is like having a patron that you work under or something like that. What if for Zendikar Rising, it's kind of a pick a side thing. Like Soren is kind of rallying people against Nahiri and vice versa on her own world, like what she did on Innistrad. Yeah. I'm completely thinking of this right now, but I think that'd be super, super cool. It'd be rad. But yeah. See that? That's... Um, another thing that's kind of tied to Zendikar that I kind of I'm not going to get into as much detail on is that's where Obnixilis spent a lot of his time, and his story is still still going on now that he can planeswalk again. So I'd kind of like to see him. Uh, I could potentially see, see him, yeah, see Big Nixie becoming the the villain of the set. But yeah, that's that's kind of what I want. I th- thought would be kind of cool to look at is. Um, Mostly, like, what's going to fill the gap for the villain on Zendikar Rising, and could we be seeing Nahiri and Soren again? Yeah. Um, uh, what, what, I'm, what about what you, I, friend? What I'm interested in seeing, it's it's probably a surprise to no one, because I've talked about it before, um, is uh, the last time we saw Ashiok was in Theros. Theros oh, Beyond I know Death. where you're going with this. Yeah, Ashiok... Um, was tormenting uh, Elspeth in the Underworld, the Theros Underworld. And first off, Elspeth isn't from Theros. I don't know what plane she's from, if it was even named. What's that? No, we... As far as Elspeth is concerned, I believe we do not know her home plane, but we do know it was taken over by the Phyrexians... And when she first planeswalked, she went to Bant on Alara. And there okay. she met um, a Johnny, and she did a bunch of stuff on Bant, and from there the two of them went to Theros. And that's where she died, and then subsequently came back. But yeah, we do yeah. not know where she's originally from. 
Yeah, so her her spark ignited when the Phyrexians took over. So, um, like you said, she went to Bant, went to Theros. That's where she stayed for pretty much the rest of her time that we know about. Um, yeah, that's where she but, stayed for um, the rest of her life and then after. Yeah, <laughs> then continued. She hit continue. Because um, that's, that's the other thing. It's at the end of Theros Beyond Death with because A- Ashiok left. Yeah, uh, getting, but she also yeah, but yeah. Cause she also did, and she was followed by Calix. Yes, I'm 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 getting to that. Um, Fantastic. So, um, Ashiok tormented her in the underworld, and he could peer into her dreams. Well, and they Ashiok has okay, no they sorry they peered into her dreams and saw the Phyrexians, and they and they being a, a being that loves to torment people by making. Yeah. A being um, of dream. pure nightmares. <laughs> yeah, by making nightmares real. Um, they were like, oh, these Phyrexians are sick. I want to find these so I can use them. Because I believe they can just take whatever nightmares they've found or whatever memories they have and just make them real wherever they go. So Yeah, that's, I think, that's Ashiok's big deal. Yeah, so I believe that their plan is to find the Phyrexians and... Um, make it so that they can make their own Phyrexians. What um, if Ashiok brings back a twisted version of Yogmoth? Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. That would be sick. Neither did I. Like, I say that... a twisted version just because obviously Yogmoth, I believe, is fully dead at this point. But I... if Ashiok is going around and poking and prodding and trying to learn about the Phyrexians... I don't think there's any way that he could not... Well, sorry, that they could not learn about Yogg. Yeah. I I think whatever um, Ashiok makes is under their control, right? So I believe so, yes. If, if they made their own Phyrexians, then they would just be the leader. They That would be weird, but... Um, or... Huh? Get this. Okay, so roll with me on this. Ashiok, let's say Ashiok ends up on New Phyrexia, uh, where obviously the Praetors are all warring with each other. The Praetors, obviously not, they could care less what Ashiok has to say. But they do listen to, I believe, what Elish Norn refers to as the father of machines, who I believe is Yogg. So what if what it takes... For the Praetors to finally team up under one banner is Ashiok to create a nightmare version of Yogg and serve as, like, have that serve as, like, the figurehead with Ashiok as, like, the puppet master. And so Yogg is now back, quote-unquote, leading the Phyrexians and is now, like, black-blue because it's Ashiok's influence. But it's really Ashiok behind the Ex- whole thing. Yeah, we could get a new legendary creature for Yogmoth, and it, we have like Teferi and Karn against them. Oh my god! Like Ashiok is just like Obnixilis, and where they could be a, a new big bad. Exactly. With, with their power set, they could and their motives to torment Cause, people. Because all things considered, and I realize how this is about to sound. I don't know if Ashiok is necessarily evil. And I realize how that sounds, given everything Ashiok is and does. But I don't know if Ashiok is necessarily evil in, say, the same way that the Phyrexians are. So what if we got, like, this corruption going on back and forth of Ashiok using these magics to bring up a manifestation of Yogmoth, And the, the manifestation is more Yogmoth than it appears. And so it kind of becomes a thing of like, who's leading who? Oh, that could turn into a real complex story. Cause I think if the Phyrexian went, not if, when the Phyrexians come back, it's probably not going to be in a small way. Oh, I yeah, doubt no, it's going to be a one-off set. Yeah, no, because we know Karn is still planning... Karn is planning a genocide of the plan. That's the only reason he hasn't joined the Gatewatch. Yeah. 
So we could see Karn again. We could see the Phyrexians again. The pacifist. All the creators. Oh, what's that? <laughs> the pacifist is is planning, <laughs> planning a genocide. genocide. I mean, it's the Phyrexians. They're they're corruption on the multiverse. Yeah, um, he's he's like the. I'm vegan except for all the times that I eat meat. <laughs> I'm a pacifist, uh, except for the time that I want to destroy an entire world. But yeah, we. What if we got new Praetor cards? We finally like learn the, uh, the fate of Urobraskan children because I believe those two are the only ones that we don't know if they're still alive or not. I'm guessing they're alive. Uh, it's. I would put more bet that Urbrask is alive over Shieldred just because Urbrask I think can hide easier but if I remember correctly uh, Elish Norn tore apart Shieldred's forces ah so we could see something kind of in a similar vein to when the God Eternals came back on Ravnica but it wasn't yeah. all of them because Hazaret never died we could see a cycle of mythics Minus black and red with something else filling in for them. Yeah, like how Ilharg filled in Ravnica, or uh, exactly. Sparks red god. Exactly. That could be interesting. Um, so, that would just be a really fun plot thread to, to revisit. And backstepping a little bit, you mentioned earlier how Calyx, the uh, brand new planeswalker from Theros, yeah, who was should not chasing have a spark. Elspeth. He should not have a spark, but he does, and we just accept it. But, uh, but yeah, so that's another plot thread that they could follow. Is yeah, um, Elspeth. Elspeth is going somewhere, Els and, and Cal Elspeth is like almost certainly not going the same place as Ashiok. So their stories may not even intertwine again. They may yeah. have two completely different plot threads. Exactly, because. Calyx, Calyx was created to hunt down Elspeth and bring her back to the underworld. And it was like seeing her planes walk away that ignited his spark. Which, might I remind you, again, he should not have. I wonder if it's some weird um, uh, side effect of him being a uh, Nyxborn where he can copy... Elspeth's ability to planeswalk? I don't know. Where when I, he was created because of how much his being is tied to... Like, his purpose in life is bring back Elspeth. That's what he was created to do. That's what he was tasked to do. That is that is what he does. And the magic behind that is just so strong that she planeswalk away. I can't go get her unless I can planeswalk. And that was powerful enough to give him a spark. God, it's like, uh, what's the SCP, the the unkillable lizard? Uh, oh yeah, I've heard some people refer to him as the Tarask, because Six, famously... 683 or something? Yeah, because famously, like, you know, the Tarask also, like, can't be killed conventionally. Yeah, it's Are like... Are you saying Calyx is SCP-638? Yeah, because <laughs> he just keeps adapting, like, anything that he needs to bring Elspeth back, he just adapts. Uh, it is, it is not 638. Um, I think you got it right. Uh, 682? 683, I thought it was. Uh, it's 682. 682? Yeah. I don't think that's right. I'm on the SCP Foundation website right now. Is it really? It's, it's SCP 682. I'm oh. looking at his picture. Okay. Never mind then. But yeah, um, that would be a cool plot thread. There's also, well, I'll, I'll let you, I'll pass it back to you for a bit. Okay, so going back to the Brushwag. Um, no. <laughs> clearly, he has grown in power since we last saw him. Because the original Brushwag, in addition to looking just awful, uh, didn't have, didn't have Trample. And... Uh, didn't actually have the ability to pump his power. He um, he could make his power weaker by boosting his toughness. And then we got the almighty Brushwag, who 
granted it's weaker um <laughs> i'm still i'm still recording uh <laughs> i know i know but, I, for for those of you at home because you won't know i i exited the discord call now the piece of the puzzle that we're forgetting is there's oh a my god hold on let me let me let me do this I don't uh, want to. There's a playtest card called Interplanar Brushwag, oh who God. exists on the Interplanar battlefield, oh. and he is proof that this thing can travel between worlds, and so uh, he actually comes in before the Almighty Brushwag, who is clearly forsaken some of his power to appear back on a mortal plane as the Almighty Brushwag. So where oh, are we gonna? Where are we going to see him next? Because clearly this creature type is important enough that it maintained after all the creature type updates. They didn't errata him to be a beast, and they brought him back. So. Uh, what I'm saying is, when we go back to New Phyrexia, and it's the Gatewatch versus Ashiok and New Yogmoth and the United Praetors, uh, the Brushwag is going to appear and lay waste to everything. Okay, Tyler. Th I'm calling it now. I think you've had enough fun for this video. You're not allowed to have any more fun. And I think he's going to be Mythic Rare. Uh, I'm calling it now Mythic Rare 6645. Uh, he, can, he has Trample. He's going to make himself grow. Uh, he's going to be have protection from artifacts and from planeswalkers because no one can touch him, and he's going to be legendary. So I can finally have a brushwag commander deck. Okay, Tyler. So coming back to me on what I want. Um, what do you think brushwag is going to do after the destruction of New Phyrexia? I'm not gonna follow that train of thought. Um, I will instead talk about a. Uh, the, a plane that we've heard about that I would like to go to at some point that we've never been to, and that's uh, that's Vryn. That's uh, Jace's home plane. Ah, the so plane you with think the, the with the Brushwag is going to use the power of the Mage... That's where the Brushwag gets his power, from those Mage Rings. Oh my god. Okay, I'm done. But no, you're right, yeah. Because uh, we've <laughs> been to... Because we've got the original five... We've got Nyssa, Chandra, Liliana, Gideon, and um, and Jace, and Jace, and right, the one the we're planes, talking so, about. <laughs> yeah, so there's Kaladesh, Theros, Dominaria, and Zendikar. Yeah, Nyssa is from Zendikar, and so yes. yeah, even even if we expand that to, well, I guess if we expand it to the new members of the Gatewatch, I don't think we've seen Kaya's home plane either, but. Bringing it back to like yeah the original the original five Vryn is the only plane that we haven't been to, except for in Origins there's the you're at the Mage Rings which was a land, and in if we if you do um what is it the Planeswalk cards and you you play that way, uh, Vryn is one of the cards but also like every single almost every single plane that we've been to has been featured on the plane chase. That's what they are. Almost every plane has been featured on the plane chase cards, except for the newest ones. Yeah. So Vryn would be an interesting place just because we know so little about it. It would, it would be, it would just, it just looks fascinating to me. Just looking at the mage rings and how almost, um, decrepit, they look almost like they're ruins, even uh, even though we know Jace is from there and there there's clearly life there. It almost looks like a, a post-apocalyptic wasteland, in my opinion. Um, 
I tried what do you to think look of that? It, I tried to look it up, and it tried to correct Vryn to Rin. As in, just like, look at majoring network. Because you can see the mage rings, which is like one of the biggest structures there. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I guess looking at it. It looks. Okay, it looks less damaged than I thought it did. But, but it looks like they were built not out of the best materials. Yeah. It you looks can like see... they were kind of hobbled together. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here's the plane chase one. Yeah, the plane chase one, they really look old and worn and but damaged. Even if you look and... at. There's the Mage Ring Responder, who is the 7-mana seven 7-7 seven, seven Golem from Origins. Uh, he doesn't untap during your untap step, and for 7 you can untap him, and when he attacks he deals 7 damage to target creature defending player controls. But he just seems kind of cool. Um, like, even looking at that and looking in the background of Jason's of artwork. Yeah. Yeah. It, they look ancient. I, guess I don't even right know word. if it looks ancient. It looks like Vryn maybe has like a population problem, and or maybe this is like the poorer parts of the plane. Because even like some of Jace's clothes, kind of. Well, I guess not really. I guess his clothes look kind of fine. But um, my my running theory is that the mage rings were built in a, the distant past of Vryn and. In present day, no one knows how they work because everyone who built them is either gone or they've just progressed so far in their society. Like, like how humans don't, uh, for the longest time, didn't know what um, Stonehenge, Stonehenge yeah. did, unless unless we figured that out by now. I, I actually don't know, but um, something like that. And they're clearly like very powerful structures. If you look at made the card majoring network. But in other card art, they just look old, almost like they aren't able to, they aren't in use anymore. And that, that could have a, that means that the plane could have a very rich history. And if the society is built around that, um, in like a, a less, um, a less modernized, less technological civilization built around these structures that were built by more technologically advanced people. I just... I don't know. I think there's a lot of potential with Vryn. Yeah, no. Especially now that Jace is not necessarily tied to Ravnica anymore. Because he's no longer the Guild Pact. Yeah. It could be... He's free. Yeah, it could be kind of, Well, like, he was always free to go. Like, that was... Because that was kind of an issue with him to begin with, is... He was the guild pack, so he was supposed to, like, you know, keep an eye on things, but I think... And then he just kept leaving. Yeah, he just kept leaving. Just peace. Uh, and I think Lavinia was kind of, like, his... Um, stand-in. His, his stand-in, or, like, just was, like, keeping an eye on the paperwork and everything, but she also... Like, because I think they were trying to keep the idea of planeswalking a secret from Niv... Or at least I know, mm -hmm. like, Ral was. Uh, but yeah, so That's now funny, that... funny, considering Ral is a Blainswalker. Exactly, it was, and he's part of Niv's guild, or he was part of Niv's guild, I don't think... The is it uh, don't belong to Niv anymore. I think Niv has, a, yeah. has officially given the is it to Ral. Um, yeah. But yeah, now that he doesn't have that tie to Ravnica, we could see... Because maybe... Part of the reason why he never wanted to go back home was he didn't want to feel like he didn't he was afraid of what he would see and like if he found like his family he might want to just like settle down and live there again and so he just decided that while he's guild packed you know maybe just stay clear of there but now that he isn't the living guild packed anymore yeah no i think it'd be super super cool to see to see Vryn and finally see all of the original gate watches uh home worlds because he's he's the only one and it's been a while yeah i want to see a whole set based in vren and i want it to have artifact creatures i want it to have like old rusty automatons and i i just want them to go full steampunk with it Ooh, yeah cool. whereas like kaladesh 
had like this eastern steampunk vibe uh Vryn could was, be very much like western like victorian steampunk yeah because i think um what well, you just said it kaladesh was, is also is more clean the machines are seem like more new yeah like, the, Vryn could kaladesh be, like, more old. yeah kaladesh kind of combined steampunk and like art like so like fancy filigree was like part of the thing and it was part of the plane and i think it had to do with the ether that they were using is it just kind of naturally like formed these structures because like if you look at things like uh kaladish is where we get one of my favorite islands where it's just like these swirls of like deep blue rivers uh and like the clouds form the same wisps and so yeah it would be really cool to on one end you've got this like very nice very ornate steampunk and then we get to Vryn and that man over there has cobbled together uh an arm cannon out of several tin cans and a box of wheaties <laughs> yeah it's very <laughs> thrown together yeah, that would be so cool. And I think it would be fitting based on what we've seen of Vryn. Yeah, and especially, like, because at this point, we've, like, Dominaria, we've we've seen repeatedly. Like, early magic was purely Dominaria, and we've even, we've gone back in Dominaria, and we've, you know, predominantly, are, we've at least seen cards from Dominaria and a bunch of core sets, so we've been there over and over and over again. We've been to Theros twice. We've, at this, at, obviously once Zendikar Rising comes out, we'll have been to Zendikar three times. We've been to Kaladesh. It had two sets back to back about it because Kaladesh and Aether Revolt. Um, is that everyone? Kaladesh, Zendikar, Theros, Dominaria. Yeah. Uh, all of this with planes that we've seen two and three times and we've still never seen Jace's home. Yeah. So either they just haven't thought up exactly what his home is like, uh, and they're just trying to stall, or they're just saving it for the right moment, which all, I think is more likely. All of Magic's story is just a big stall until they can figure out what's up with Vryn. <laughs> Uh, it's like that's that's the end of magic is when they yeah. get to Vryn. When we, when we finally like, get to Vryn, that's when that's when they're like, all right, we're done. <laughs> they just haven't thought of how to end it yet. Uh, we're coming up on it looks like almost forty minutes. Uh, do you want to call time on this or? Sure. I I don't think I have any other ideas I wanted to touch upon. Uh, you... uh calling it now. Vryn is going to show up. 15 years from now and that's where we're going to see the final appearance of Brushwag. Okay, I'm done. He's going to appear <sighs> through the majoring networks. It's the perfect shape for him. Planeswalkers, one of these days, Tyler's going to give me an aneurysm and I will die on camera. I'm I'm pushing for that day. That's the day we break 10,000 views on a video. <laughs> All right. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you thought, what what you think, present tense, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you want to see more from us in the future, think about throwing a sub our way. Yep. And, throw uh, a comment, yeah, throw a like, a throw a sub. Tell me, tell me in the comments where you think we're going to see a brush wag next. Okay. Uh, have a great day, all. Later. <laughs>